Hello, and welcome to Animal Chiropractic Clinic Chatter, a podcast where Dr. O, from all creatures, every spine, interviews doctors and animal owners that utilize animal chiropractic to get their unique perspectives. Yes, it's really a thing. Dr. O utilizes his 30 years of experience as both an animal chiropractor and veterinarian, and to dig deep into the discussion of complex issues affecting the lives of your animal friends and companions. Join us for this educational episode. Thanks for joining us for this portion of the episode as Dr. O begins to answer the question, What is animal chiropractic? He will look at how the chiropractic adjustment is a valuable and viable treatment for what ails your animals. So animal chiropractic, um, we're looking for muscle tone and we can have muscle tone that's perfect, muscle tone that's too tight, and muscle tone that's atrophied or too loose. Um, think of it as like somebody was coming to tune a piano. You can have sharp notes or flat notes or notes that are just right. Now me, I can't tell you if my piano's in tune or not, my guitar strings are in tune, but it doesn't take an expert piano tuner very long to figure out which notes are out of whack how to correct them so that the piano can play a nice tune. That's the way it is with your animal chiropractor. You know, a good animal chiropractor is going to take three to four minutes to figure out the tone in your animal's body, figure out which ones are too tight, which ones are too loose, figure out which ones are atrophied, figure out which nerves are causing the problem, what exercises you need to do to get those atrophied muscles up so that they're, um, you know, working properly, uh, where you need to put the ice so that you can relax the um, muscles that are too tight. You know, one of the things people ask me is what about, you know, what about a uh, muscle relaxer? Well, if we have a tight muscle right there in my hand, you can see this muscle right here is tight. It's tight. If I take a generalized muscle relaxer, it's going to and guess what muscle is still the tightest muscle in my body? This one right here. Okay, may not be painful anymore, but it still is the tightest muscle. Not going to help my spine hold its alignment very well. So generalized muscle relaxers um, don't work very well with the chiropractic adjustment. Um, in fact, they make it hold less longer. So we highly recommend that the anti-inflammatory you use is ice because it is the most specific, localized um, anti-inflammatory that there is. Every time we give a pill or a potion, um, it's affecting all the muscles in the body, uh, which include the muscles of the heart and the muscles of the intestine. So, you know, it's kind of hard to have a functioning animal um, at optimal level when the heart, the gut, then the organs are working up to high level. So see your animal chiropractor on a regular basis. Make sure to visit our website, allcreatureseveryspine.com, where you can subscribe to the show and learn more about getting your animals adjusted. If you are in the Meridian, Texas area, drop in on a Tuesday afternoon to get your animals adjusted. If that isn't possible, schedule a consultation on your animal's health with Dr. O. You can also purchase a copy of Dr. O's book. Yes, it's really a thing. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes. For me, my hero is Frank, my best friend. But even the greatest heroes need help sometimes. Frank and I were at the park the other day when he started limping and favoring his left leg. I didn't see what happened, but I could tell something was wrong. So we went to see Frank's favorite vet, Yvette. Yvette the vet. After running some tests, she determined that Frank had torn his ACL. 
His best option was surgery. But unfortunately for me, surgery wasn't an option. So what could I possibly do to be a hero to my hurting hero? That was when Yvette told us about Hero Braces. She took a quick cast of his leg and said this mold would be used to create a biomechanically designed stifle brace, custom made just for Frank, allowing his body's natural healing processes to take over and stabilize the knee. About two weeks later, she fitted the brace and gave us the green light to walk, hike, and snuggle and do all the activities that Frank and I were used to doing. It was that simple. Hero braces are lightweight, don't stretch or tear, and are durably designed to last the life of your dog. So Frank can get back to being Frank. Like I said, heroes come in all shapes and sizes. And lucky for us, so do hero braces. Hello everyone, and welcome to barfworld.com. If you're seeing this video, it typically means you're interested in trying our 90 day challenge. If your pet is suffering from allergies, kidney issues, obesity, diabetes, or even cancer, our food can help with that. So if you're ready to see your pet's health dramatically improve in just 90 days, call us and schedule your consultation today. Hope to talk to you guys soon. What is going on everyone? My name is Stan Smith. I'm the CEO of XDog and the inventor of the XDog Weight and Fitness Vest. What is the X-Dog Weight and Fitness Vest? In a nutshell, it is the world's greatest harness for dogs. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're looking to build muscle, combat obesity, address anxiety issues, high energy, you wanna suppress that energy level. If you just wanna take the average walk and turning into a health improving workout, we made it so convenient to exercise your dog that you literally only need about 30 seconds a day. It doesn't matter if you're doing basic obedience training or competing high level dog sports or in protection sports, the X-Dog Weight and Fitness Vest can enhance it and take any type of daily lifestyle to the next level. If you want to be part of our mission of eliminating canine obesity or just being a part of our team, make sure you go to teamxdog.com. As always, man, I want to thank you for your time and your support and Team X Dog Strong. Join us as Dr. O interviews a certified chiropractor, veterinarian, or an animal owner. These enthusiastic people explain how they utilize animal chiropractic to alter the lives of the animals in their communities. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Animal Chiropractic Clinic Chatter. I'm your host, Dr. O. Thank you all again for joining us wherever you're at. Um, our guest today, Dr. Jeff Botcher. So Dr. Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice. Um, I've been out for, I'm a 2009 graduate from K-State. Um, I practice in North Central Texas. Uh, do pretty much just general GP, large animal mobile. Um, do fair amount of chiropractic and just kind of a little bit of everything else. Uh, so getting ready to go into breeding season and get busy. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your That's biggest your big... win with animal chiropractic? Um, I was thinking about that when I was trying to get on the computer. Um, probably I had a two year old mare with wobblers that we kept going for probably a couple years and then she changed hands and I've kind of lost her to follow up. So, um, she was, she was to the point where she was not rideable and we got her back where they could get her started as a yearling. And we got her to the point where she could get started under saddle as a two year old. So. Good. Um, we have one here that needs a rider, but she came or he came, you know, when he was, uh, Oh, a little over a yearling. And uh, of course, you know, when we, let's explain a little bit what Wobblers is. It's in, was yours diagnosed with an x-ray or just 
Um, Mine wound up being diagnosed with myelogram. Um, okay. Was, it was that bad for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and but the chiropractic exam still helps, even though absolutely they they have the you know diagnosis of a wobbler, which is a narrowing of the vertebral canal. Um, ours fell off the trailer uh, five years ago, and he's still here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember him. Uh, and you know, if we don't, if if the students don't adjust that lower neck, he starts kind of, you know, having some issues in that front end again. So, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter necessarily. I won't say that we go against the veterinary diagnosis all the time. It's just that sometimes the veterinary diagnosis doesn't have a treatment that is as safe and maybe as effective as the chiropractic adjustment. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, this horse was, you know, the, the doc, the, the other veterinarians, and he was, she was a prime candidate for a basket and the owners didn't want to spend the $10,000 for the basket surgery. And so we opted for chiropractic to see what it would do before they went to that next step and we had significant progress. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed sometimes at the progress <laughs> that we get. Um, so going into breeding season, uh, you'll be adjusting a lot of uh, the opposite ends, huh? Um, yeah, we, I adjust a lot of uh, of uh, <laughs> sacral apexes, and uh, I also adjust a lot of atlases on babies, on newborns. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. gotten to do I've gotten to doing that on pretty much any new any foal or cat, even calves that are born on our premise get get their atlas adjusted. Cool. Um, so on your premise. You have some, uh, you know, what was your incidence of like calf scours before versus now after? Um, with calf scours, for, I've been pretty fortunate. We only have about four cows on premise, so I don't have a whole okay. lot. You know, we just we just don't have any problems. Any, you know, the slow starters and whatnot, like I've seen in the past. So, and now they're just. Yeah, you don't have that. Up and go. So in, yeah. in the same way, in the same way with foals, with you know, we don't, we haven't seen any dummies and that kind of stuff. It's cool. I um had one, uh, a student call me at four in the morning, uh, and she, I answered my phone and she says, "Doc, this stuff works." And I said, "Well, yeah, I kind of know that." And I said, "So, what was your light bulb?" And she goes, "Well." I had a dummy foal come in last night at eight o'clock and I milked the mare and tube fed the baby and did that every two hours and was kind of studying, trying to, you know, in the meantime. And she says, I woke up a little bit ago and I thought, well, I'm just going to adjust that baby's atlas before I, uh, before I go milk the mare. And so she adjusted the baby's atlas, and went to get the stuff so she could milk the mare and came back out and, the baby was sucking, and that's when she called. And it's like, yeah, but why didn't you do that at eight o'clock last night? <laughs> you can get some sleep. No. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Um, so, yeah. Have you noticed uh, concept? You said sacral apexes. Have you noticed some conception rate differences? Um, you know, with fifty or sixty mares a year, it's kind of hard to notice any specific rate differences but i've noticed some mares that were in previous years were hard to get in foal have been easier to get in foal yeah um yeah we had um uh, you know a, a student that had ten thousand cows that mm -hmm. she was in charge of and and she definitely noticed a difference about um about a five percent three to five percent increase in service uh second service conception rate with okay. just adjusting that sacral apex. So yeah. you're getting ahead of the game because you know you're doing it right after the first time. Whereas, you know, in dairy cattle, there's not necessarily a veterinarian involved in the first go round. Correct. 
Correct. And uh, so she was just doing the preg checking, and then, and then that's when she would adjust the open ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that study got discontinued. And I said, "What do you mean? It? Why did you discontinue it?" And she said, "Well, because it cost too much." And I'm like, "How how?" can adjust the sacral apex cost too much and she said well i didn't say i quit adjusting them she said we just don't have a study anymore <laughs> her her biostatistician said you know what those control cattle are costing us the ones you don't adjust yeah <laughs> and that's where the cost came in so once the biostatistician noticed a difference in numbers and he put the pencil to the paper and he said, you know, this is costing us um, about $2,000 a cow, 5% on 10,000 cows is a pretty significant amount of money. Yes, it is. And so they quit, they quit it. They, they quit the study because they no longer have a control group. And, uh, you know, which is, it's kind of hard to do because to have control groups because if you have a calf that's a little slow or you don't know if it's a little slow yet or not but if you wanted to have a control calf like say 10 percent of your calves didn't get adjusted that's kind of going to hurt your pocketbook isn't it yeah yep <laughs> so i mean we definitely saw that with our chickens you know, two week difference in study and uh, market time. So, a huge difference, a huge difference. Um, so a lot of reproductive work, and you're going to adjust those and the and the foals. You get them off to the good start. Then, when do you like to see them the second time? You know, a lot of times I won't necessarily see them again until weaning, or about the time we start vac vaccines. Okay. Um, at about four to five months of age. Yeah. Do you recheck them then? Yeah. Yep. Cool. And then uh, what about on those foals? When do you want to see them? Uh, you know, there again, a lot of times I won't see them until they're four or five months old again. Unless, you know, unless, unless the mare comes back through more than once. And then sometimes I'll do them again at like six to eight weeks of age. You know, if we have to rebreed mom or something. Yeah, but if everything's working all right, then you don't need to see exactly, exactly, and and that's the whole point. So yeah, all right, and then um, uh, and still a few competition horses. Yep, yep. I've got some older competition horses that we're keeping going, and you know, and some younger ones that we're hopefully get getting up there. So good. Um. Do you see like, oh, I know with, with some of my clients, um, one of the first things they saw was that they felt like they were injecting fewer joints. For sure, less frequently. Yeah. For sure, less frequently. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, on them older horses that were having cervical issues and getting injected, you know, a couple times a year, a lot of those were getting down to once a year, once every 18 months. Um, just keep, keeping them feeling good yeah and there's a lot a lot less chance of a of an adverse side effect with the chiropractic adjustment than there is with a joint injection you know i mean get one joint injection that goes bad and kind of leaves a sour note on you mm -hmm. <laughs> um anything else you've been adjusting competition horses pregnant horses or breeding few backyard horses. horses, but most it's mostly just been horses. Um, the occasional dog that's owned by a horse by a horse owner, but yeah, um, cool. But had a big old Great Dane that had come in. They thought he had bloat, but um, he's owned by a horse client of mine, so it was kind of like adjusting a horse. <laughs> and he adjusted him, and he farted. Him, and he went on with life. He's actually okay. doing pretty good now. I think he's actually due to come back in here in another week or two. Yeah, cool. All right. So what do you wish all the horse owners out there knew about? 
chiropractic? You know, just the biggest thing is, is just the horses feel better and perform better and just, you know, overall, they're just healthier and happier. Cool. All right. Well, how do I get a hold of you if I want my horse suggested by Dr. Jeff? Um, you can call my cell phone. That's 712-898-5231. Uh, clinic, or you can find us on the web at artandsciencevet.com. All right. Cool. Appreciate that. Um, if veterinarians thinking about adding animal chiropractic, what would you tell them? Go to ACEs. <laughs> should they add it though? Why should they add it? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I was adjusting horses. I was adjusting cervix, cervical, uh, doing cervical adjustments on horses after my first session at ACEs. And I don't made enough money to pay for my whole session. Um, it's been, it, it's changed a lot of things in what I do, especially like with my lameness exams, they've changed a lot. I add the chiropractic portion into it. Um, and I feel, you know, it, it adds another, another route that we can treat and, you know, make our horses do better and feel better. Cool. All right. Um, so how has it changed your practice? Do you work as hard or less hard or? It seems like I work harder. <laughs> there's, you know, there's some days you get some of them big old, especially those old big like pleasure horses and whatnot. It, it does sap you pretty good. At yeah. least it does me energy wise. But, um, you know, there's, it seems like I have a lot fewer emergencies would be my yeah. biggest thing. Yeah, that's that's big. Um, like the horses make better choices. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is we see, in my opinion, is we see them more frequently. They can head off some of that stuff before it becomes a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you give us an example that you can think of? You know, I, the biggest one I can think of is like the older horses that, you know, the owners are starting to see more fecal water. We can. You know, we can get on them and see, you know, get them adjusted and maybe help out there. And we can do, you know, check teeth and do some of that kind of stuff and get ahead of the problem before, hopefully before they, you know, become a colic or some other chronic issue. Right. Yeah, you bet. Because we, we definitely, you know, help with GI and we help with GI motility and we <coughs> do all kinds of stuff. And, and you bet keep those joints as healthy as possible yep. so all right we'll appreciate it give us your contact one more time art and science vet .com is the web page and phone number is 712-898-5231all right thanks everybody for listening and remember the body heals one way and one way only above down inside out thank you so much if you are or know a veterinarian or chiropractor or a student of either of these professions, visit our website, Animal Chiropractic Education Source, to see how to become certified in animal chiropractic. Start improving the lives of the animals around you. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the ACES channels so that you never miss an exciting episode.